Hey guys, welcome back to the Sound Video Doctor here on YouTube. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about my thoughts on the fairly new Super Goop CC Cream. This is a multitasking product, so if you're someone, you know, who's like, I I'd like to decrease some of the steps in my skincare routine, this might be up your alley because it's going to take the step of your moisturizer in some cases, your sun protection, and it'll also help to even out your skin tone. But with skin tone, let's put a push pin there because there's so many things to talk about when it comes to that. So keep watching. All right, so a couple of things to note. You may need to go back and watch two videos of mine for reference on a particular topic that we're gonna be talking about in this video. So one, make sure you check out my video on iron oxide, visible light, and how it pertains to people who are Fitzpatrick four through six who have persistent pigmentation issues like melasma. And I hate to use the word aggressive, but we're gonna say aggressive post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. Um, make sure you check that out. And also my video where I had a number of skin of color experts where we talked about chemical sunscreens versus physical sunscreens for deeper skin tones. Those are two very important videos that you want to watch in their entirety, you know, so that this video and things that I say in this video don't confuse you. But nonetheless, let us talk about this CC cream. Now, let me give you the official description from Supergoop. So the description from Supergoop says that this is a super clean, oil-free, color-correcting cream with 100% mineral SPF 50 to provide complete care for your skin and natural buildable coverage. Now remember the word clean is not a word that, you know, needs to be approved. Like, you know, clean can mean different things for a different brand. So clean is not a regulated term. Keep that in mind. Um, coverage is light, finish is natural, formulation is a cream. Um, skin types, normal, dry, combo, and oily. Um, the highlighted ingredients, um, according to their listing on the Sephora site, non-nano zinc oxide made of mineral particles that are larger in size and sit safely on top of skin to absorb UVB rays and reflect UVA rays. Um, apple extract, which helps the skin appear smoother and brighter. Irish moss slash red seaweed extract protects against free radicals with the vitamins and minerals needed to maintain healthy looking skin. Um, it's vegan, cruelty free, gluten free. Um, and you know, they have some mention of it being, you know, a multitasking skincare product, like I mentioned in my intro. So with a product like this, you're able to cover a bunch of steps in your skincare routine. For some people, moisturizer. Um, I found, I have oily skin. I found that I could, you know, just put this on and, you know, be fine. But for those of you with drier skin, maybe you might need to put a moisturizer on or at least a hydrating serum. And then there's certain times of the year, maybe if it gets a little cold and dry and you're running heat and, you know, the air conditioning and things like, you know, outside factors that can kind of dry your skin out, you might want to consider of course, having a humidifier, but you know, you might want to consider, you know, making sure that you're hydrated before you put a product like this on. But typically this is something that you're going to be able to use without having a separate moisturizer. You're also going to get your sun protection through the active ingredients in here is 4% titanium dioxide and 20% zinc oxide. And then you're going to get some color aspect. So we're going to get into color here because whoo. <laughs> so you're going to be able to get some, you know, some color coverage with a product like this that can help even out your skin tone in theory. But now this product checks off a lot of really great boxes um, for a certain segment of the population. And by that, I mean, you know, particular if you're Fitzpatrick, well, we'll get into more and more. You just got to keep watching the video to see what I mean. But uh, particularly if you're Fitzpatrick four through six, um, and you're someone with a persistent pigmentation issue such as melasma or aggressive post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, you might be someone who may want to have extra things in your sunscreen to help protect you against visible light. And again, um, make sure you check out my video on visible light iron oxides with Dr. Pearl Grimes, who was one of the dermatologists in that study for more information. I don't wanna go through you know that whole thing again in this video because it's just gonna make it long. And y'all know y'all don't be watching long videos and whatnot. I barely watch the short ones. Anyway, <laughs> 
So for that particular part of the, the population, you, you know, you especially want to look out for visible light. So visible light can have an effect on all of us, but in particular, it's been found that visible light can be very tricky for Fitzpatrick four through six who have uh, progressive and persistent pigmentation issues. If you're someone who gets a pimple here and there and it, it leaves a dark spot, um, I wouldn't necessarily categorize you in that category. So this product checks off a lot of boxes, some really great boxes, especially if you're within that category, Fitzpatrick four through six, and you have a persistent pigmentation issue because you have a tinted mineral sunscreen, check, check. It also contains iron oxide, check, check. The color though, <laughs> okay, so here's the thing, right? You have tinted mineral sunscreens, and I've tried a bunch already. Make sure you check out those videos to see which ones I've tried and which ones I liked. So sometimes a tinted mineral sunscreen can fool you because it can look peachy or maybe like a light brown, and you look at it and you think, oh, that's not gonna blend into my skin, but there are plenty of them that do, right? So I tried this uh, Super Goop CC Cream out. I actually really like the performance. I have oily skin. Um, it was, you know, that part of September where it started to kind of like, it was cooling down, but then it started to get warm again when I tested it out. It wore really well, which I'll show you in my little wear test. Because this thing is not my color, and I typically don't like being clowned when I walk around the streets, um, I haven't really left the house. I do need to go downstairs real quick because um, my dad has some stuff for me and he's like, hurry up and come downstairs. So I'm I'm probably gonna get yelled at for taking the time to stop and do this video. But this mess, it may not look as like off on camera as it looks in real life, but maybe it is off. Um, it did settle in a little bit better. Wear wise, it hasn't been you know, I've got oily skin, but it's also a mild September, early fall afternoon, so it's not very hot, but it's also not cold. Um, not a lot of, you know, super greasiness, but I'll be back if I don't get clowned by people downstairs, but I'm hoping nobody can see <laughs> how off my skin looks with this mask on. Maybe I'll put a hat on too. All right, here we are at the end of the day. This wears really well. I'm just not with the, the color. <laughs> they gonna need some more people with this color. Um, I was watching Girlfriend, because I was re-watching it on Netflix, and it was a little part that made me shed some tears. You know, I get a little emotional sometimes when I watch things. Um, so I did kind of, you might notice that there's a little bit like of um, product missing right here. Um, that's because, you know, the tears, you know how when you, how your face looks when you, you cry, when you tear up a little bit. So I, I kind of cleansed that so that it wouldn't look crazy on camera. Um, but it did wear nicely. I'm not like overly greasy or anything. Again, I have oily skin. So Super Goop um, does say that you can reapply this throughout the day. I do think that that can kind of get really messy, especially if you're someone who is going to put makeup on top of this. So I think it would be much cleaner and easier to just use a mineral powder. Um, this one's by Peter Thomas Roth. I'll have it linked in the description box. I like the way it felt, it, it performed well. These stingy dark colors that they have though, like. <laughs> now here's the thing with mineral, with um, some mineral sunscreens. Sometimes if you have a deeper skin tone, you have to do, you know, just do a little extra work to get a mineral sunscreen to work. Not with all of them, but with some of them. And the thing with mineral sunscreens, um, someone had mentioned in a comment on a previous video that something wasn't a perfect fit. I don't think right now we're gonna have too many perfect fits when it comes to mineral sunscreen. Thankfully though, with the um, study that Dr. Programs was a part of, we will probably get better sunscreens, you know, going forward. But now we gotta kinda work with what we got because we all know we're not playing with that sun, right? So, <laughs> so here's the thing, with, with some mineral sunscreens, you do have to do a little work. Sometimes, um, as Dr. Cheryl Burgess mentioned, sometimes you kind of have to rub it in your hands and then apply it to the skin. Sometimes you might have to apply it in thin layers and build it up so that you have the adequate amount of coverage. Um, but you're not gonna take a big dollop of mineral sunscreen and slap it on your skin and expect it to rub in. You, you gonna be real upset <laughs> if that happens, right? 
So, and then for some people, because now with this um, study on the iron oxides and there are some foundations or um, tinted products that contain these iron oxides that have been tested to show that you can mix them into your sunscreen and it does well to help block out visible light. So that's another um, option that you can do as well. And for more information on that, of course, watch those other two videos. Um, this, however, <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Now, I'll look, okay, so it looked bad. I bought the two deepest shades, 416W, 426W. 416W, we, we're gonna be like Mariah Carey, I don't know her, right? 426W was bad, however, as time progressed, it didn't look as bad, it didn't look as ghastly on me, it, it kinda calmed down a bit. But it was still bad. Now, you could put your foundation on top of this and be fine. Me, myself, personally, I feel like that's doing way too much. You know, I don't like when you do the most. Don't do the most, right? Um, <laughs> because I do feel that there are so many better tinted mineral sunscreen options out there. I'll leave a link to some of the best ones I've tried so far, but I also have a, a series on mineral sunscreens as well as tinted mineral sunscreens that I've tried for deeper skin, so make sure you check that out. Um, I just feel that there's so many better options out there for you to have to, you know, do the most to color correct this. Even if I was going to, so I'm someone who loves to wear makeup. If I was someone who I only wanted to wear minerals, uh, tinted mineral sunscreens and, you know, I wanted to put my foundation on top, I, it wouldn't be with this product. I would, right off the bat, just like thinking off the top of my head, I'm thinking of Replenix. Replenix had two amazing mineral sunscreens that I really liked. There's one from Murad, and there are some Isden ones that I'm gonna talk about in a separate video. So here's the thing with sunscreen, right? It's, it's almost like buying jeans where you kind of have to try things on and find out what fits. And I also am a firm believer that some of us may need multiple types of sunscreens in our routines depending on our, our lifestyle. For instance, the type of sunscreen that I'm gonna wear uh, on a daily basis, like underneath my makeup, is gonna be totally different from the type of sunscreen I would need to wear, let's say if I was outdoors, you know, white water rafting. Now, I've never been white water rafting. That mess sounds fun as hell. If y'all go white water rafting, you know, you might wanna invite a sis with you next time. But I'm not gonna wear that same sunscreen to go white water rafting, and I'm not gonna wear my white water rafting sunscreen to, you know, sit and, be cute. <laughs> you know what I mean? You need, you, you, there's a need for different types of sunscreens in your routine. This is just not for any of my routines. So this is kind of like a good example of something where if you're looking at the ingredients, it ticks on some really great boxes, but then you actually try it and it's like, oh man, it's not for me. Now I'm not gonna take away from the product um, because it is a great product, but you just have to fit within a certain kind of category for this to be a great product for you. If you happen to fit into one of the stingy deeper shades and you're someone looking to kind of incorporate some of the steps in your skincare routine so you don't have a whole bunch of different products and a whole bunch of different steps and you're just trying to get in and out, I feel you. If that's you, I feel you. <laughs> um, then you might wanna look at this. If you're someone who doesn't mind adding you know, um, a foundation or some sort of like pigment drops uh, on top of it to color correct it, then it's not gonna be that bad. Me, myself personally, I don't like when I have to do the most when there are other options available, right? So if this was the only thing close enough to a good tinted uh, mineral sunscreen with iron oxide in it, then I'd be like, all right, guys, we have to roll up our sleeves and get in and get to it. Um, but I have tried so many better options when it comes to tinted mineral sunscreens and you know just mineral sunscreens in general that you can put your own um, foundation on top of for, for me to be like, you know, this is a really great idea for you guys to get. So it's a no for, for me, dog, but it might be a yes for you. If you're someone who's already tried this or you're thinking about trying it, leave me a comment below, get all chitty chatty, let me know your thoughts on the Super Goop CC Cream. Now, for those of you guys who, you know, you you may feel a little fatigued with the sunscreen, you know, all the talk and all the new information that's coming out, I feel you, but I still want you to understand that it is important to wear sunscreen year round. I don't care if it's, you know, the winter time, 
if you're at the North Pole, if you're at the South Pole, if you're at the equator, <laughs> if it's raining, did I say if it was cloudy? If it, you have to wear sunscreen year round during the day, no excuses. Now, there are many reasons why you need to be wearing sunscreen. You know, I'll rattle off a couple, especially for those of us, you know, with skin of color, the sun's rays can actually make pigmentation worse. That's one. Two, a lot of the products that we use in our skincare routines, whether you have pigmentation or not, can make the skin more sensitive to the sun. And it's just like being on a hamster wheel and hustling backwards because you're doing the most in your skincare routine only to have the sun undo it. <laughs> so wear your sunscreen. I have lots of videos and blog posts on different sunscreens to check out. So I will link those above and below. Make sure you check it out. Now remember also, if you watch that video with Dr. Pearl Grimes on visible light and iron oxides, remember she said that iron oxides are great in what they tested in their study. However, it's not the only material that can help with visible light. Antioxidants are another one as well. And there are sunscreens out there that um, contain antioxidants. Um, and then there's also, you know, using a vitamin C serum and other types of antioxidants that may already be in your routine. So just kind of, you know, get your products out, look at the back, see what's in there. You know, if you're having trouble figuring out what a, an ingredient is, you know, Google it. Be careful though, because some of these websites will tell you that everything is bad. I'm waiting on a website to tell you that water is gonna kill you. I'm sure there's one out there already, but me personally, I like to go on the Polish Choice website to look up ingredients. Now there is some bias there because Polish Choice does sell products, but for me, they also reference which studies they got their information from. So I feel, I feel good about reading about ingredients on the Polish Choice website, but you know, you do you and Follow me on social, the links will be in the description box. And I'll see you fine folks in my next one. Bye guys.